I'm Tessa. Hi, I'm William, and this is our tiny house in River Edge Tiny Home Community in central New Mexico. We actually, we met in a book club. We went on a date and it kind of went from zero to 60 and just found that we really connected in a lot of ways. So we initially did have a house together in Houston. It was like a big, big house. Even though it was so big, it felt constraining. There's something about when it's this big space, or like, okay, we have to keep buying stuff to fill up this empty space. And there was just something about it that, I don't know, it kind of pushed us to the point where we're like, we want to do the opposite of this. We went through the process pretty thoughtfully. Once we decided we were going to pursue building a tiny house, we put our house on the market. We decided we were going to transition to an apartment to kind of like downsize in steps, going from like, what was it, a three bedroom house. <laughs> so we moved into a one bedroom apartment while the house was being built and while we were kind of like ironing out details. We've been living in our tiny house for a little over a year. Yeah, and our builder is Rocky Mountain Tiny Houses, and they're in Durango. And the dimensions of the house are eight by 24 feet. This is our parking spot in River Edge. It has hookups for sewer, water, and electricity. And we pay about 400 a month for this spot. Starting in front of the house, we have a 6x12 cargo trailer. We bought this so we would have some extra storage, but our eventual plan is to turn it into a camper that we can tow with us. So right now I have a roof vent in it and an electrical outlet, but I'd like to add some windows and uh, some other features to make it a, a good camper. Uh, behind the trailer, uh, there's a small storage shed that I actually built uh, from scratch just as a, a fun project for me. And in there, there's just um, outdoor tools, a ladder, uh, and uh, other soccer equipment as I'm a soccer coach. It all kind of lives in there. Even though you're living tiny, sometimes it does help to have that extra storage. <laughs> and just uh, right at the back of our house, we have some built-in storage where, where we have uh, camping gear, uh, some yoga gear, just other things that are kind of bulky. It's nice to have them out of the way. So if we walk around to our front door, it's actually on the uh, driver's side of, of the house, and that's, that's a little unusual, but it just worked best for our plan, and uh, so that's where it is. When we moved in, there weren't any stairs or any way to get up to that, the door, so first I, I built these little stairs just as a way to walk up, to, and then uh, we knew we wanted some kind of deck, so uh, I got to build this as well. And again, I'm a very amateur builder, but I, I enjoy doing this kind of stuff. Any Lord of the Rings fans will maybe recognize this as sort of a hobbit hole style doorknob. And uh, that was kind of our idea. Uh, uh, the unofficial name of our house is Bag End as a reference to, to Bilbo's house. All right, well, that's it for outside. Come on in and we'll take a look inside. Welcome to the inside of our tiny house. The square footage in here is 196 without the lofts. And uh, we knew we wanted a sleeping loft and a storage loft in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when we were designing the house, we really wanted it to be functional, but also cozy. We knew we wanted sort of a warm wood type feel. So we really liked the pine tongue and groove on the walls. Uh, our builder actually suggested that we have one wall be drywall with a paint color to add some accent, and we really liked the way it came out. Two years ago, I was diagnosed with ADHD, and I began to understand a lifetime of unexplained behaviors, anxiety, and shame. And untangling all of that was overwhelming. So that's why I signed up for therapy with BetterHelp, today's video sponsor. Whether you have a clinical mental health issue like depression, or you're just a human living in this complicated world going through a difficult time, therapy can give you the tools you need to approach your life in a very different way. BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy more affordable 
and more accessible. It's an online platform that makes it easy. Fill out a few questions and get matched with a professional quickly. Visit betterhelp.com slash tiny house or click the link in the description to get 10% off your first month so you can connect with a therapist to see if it helps you. Because finding a therapist is a bit like dating. If you don't really fit with the first one, you can easily switch to another at no additional cost. Therapy has been an invaluable resource for me. I've gained tools to help me live a healthier and happier life. So if you're struggling, consider online therapy. Visit betterhelp.com slash tiny house or click the link below and help support our channel. Starting over here is our living area. So when you first come in the house, we have our shoe storage here and we have a cat. So one thing that we kind of had to sacrifice was a cat tree. So we had some of this scrap carpet. William added this to our shoe storage so it can sort of function as like a cat scratching area and it's also where our cat eats. So it's kind of multi-purpose here. Our couch actually will fold out. It's more of a futon kind of couch, so it folds out into a full-size bed if we did have company. We wanted like lots of windows around here. One thing our builder asked was like the size of the window sills, things you wouldn't normally think about, but we chose a little bit bigger window sills so it sort of can function as like a side table as well. And then the couch around, it has like a fair amount of storage underneath. We actually keep our TV under there. And then in this little nook area, this is probably one of the like most used spaces that we have. We use it for a lot of different things. And then we've got a folding table here. So we'll use this as like, an eating space with some of our chairs like you can actually sit here and someone can sit here and so it's like a two-person table i also since i work from home this is my workspace so i'll sit here i'll put my laptop i'll actually like prop it up so it's eye level and then i have like a little standalone keyboard and mouse and the height actually works out perfectly so it's like ergonomic yeah, and up here we have our storage loft. So we keep like, right now it's like winter clothes. There's like a coat rack that William installed up there to keep our bulkier coats. And it's actually connected to a catwalk that when we show the loft, you can kind of see that it goes all the way across from one loft to the other. So now we're in the kitchen. This first area, this is kind of the main prep space. We really wanted this added counter space. We've seen some tiny houses where the counters are shorter and maybe there's extra living space or someone might want to put a chair here, but we really wanted the extra kitchen space. And we ended up with like tons of storage. So the cabinets are huge. We've still been able to accumulate stuff <laughs> just because we have so much space. Got a drawer just for cat related things. We use one drawer as like a really good size pantry drawer. And then we're even able in this bottom drawer to fit like pots and pans because it's just so, so deep. And then we did go with just a microwave and we went with an oven stove. It's a gas oven. So that was actually, it's the first time we've had a gas oven before. We've always had electric. So that's been kind of interesting. It's a little smaller than a typical oven. So we did, you know, kind of our standard sheet pans actually didn't fit in here. So that was one little learning curve, but for the two of us, it actually works out great and we use it pretty much every day. So it's been, it's been a good choice for us. We wanted some floating shelves just to kind of display some of our stuff. We went with like color to match our walls. And so we just thought it looked nice to have that there. We went with a two compartment sink. The compartments are maybe a little smaller, but it's actually worked out just fine for us. We don't have a dishwasher, so we just wash in the sink and there is plenty of space definitely recommend a pull-out trash like this you don't realize how much you need it until you don't have it it's great 
and then this area is our little coffee section. So we've got coffee, tea, our espresso maker, our little espresso cup octopus, cookbooks. I really, I really love this little area right here. We do have a full-size fridge and freezer and just the way it was because of the loft, it's up a little higher and we have some storage space under here. So little things again that like we wouldn't think of, but like where to put a full-size mirror. That was actually a challenge. So our little full-size mirror uh, solution is just propping it up right here and it actually works great. Every little nook and cranny, we're able to use it to kind of have what we need. So on the opposite side of the kitchen, starting over here, we have our closet. So our builder did recommend, um, instead of putting a door, to just use a curtain to save space. And I'm so glad we did. So this closet actually has a lot of functions. So cat box, got like our cleaning supplies back here, vacuum, our telescoping ladder so we can get up to the storage loft. And then this is like hanging closet with all my hanging clothes tankless hot water heater that like we can control the temperature. So this closet was big enough to hold quite a lot of things. And then next moving down here, one of my favorite things in this house that I had seen another tiny house that I was like, we have to have it is a pull out pantry. And just this little space we're able to fit so, so much of our, of our kitchen stuff right in there. And moving over, we have lots of storage kind of under the stairs. We have lots of books. We're big readers. So this is like three or four layers of books. You know, is it hard to get to the back layer? Yes, but I'm just glad that we didn't have to downsize as many of our books as I thought we would. And then we got just some little baskets to keep like storage for like extra bathroom stuff. We've got another little mini closet here. And then similar, we just have a basket with like extra towels and bags and some of our hats are in there, fits nice and snugly. And then our stairs, we did go with storage stairs. So every other stair is a drawer, just kind of random stuff. Our, you know, junk drawers down here you gotta you gotta have one it's just a necessity and then our stairs actually because it's right ac across from our living area it turned out to be like a kind of comfortable place to sit if someone's on the couch so we got like a custom little cushion that we can sit on the on the stairs that we like customize to like the size and the color of our house our kitchen countertops are butcher block and they use the same butcher block for our stairs. They just used a different stain. So that was actually a really great money saver. We were able to just use the same materials and it ties in really nicely and think, we think it looks really good. Our first idea was we're going to buy some land in New Mexico. Because uh, like you said, we had visited Santa Fe and Taos and we just really fell in love with the landscape and the, the variety of geologic features in the state. I mean, there's so much to see. I, I'm a geology nerd, so that's why she's <laughs> laughing. And we were thinking, okay, how do we buy land and live on it? And we were looking at park model mobile homes you see, and we, they just didn't excite us. They all look the same. And I, we stumbled across Rocky Mountain Tiny Homes website and were kind of blown away by the design customization, the use of uh, different materials. And it turns out that, you know, our budget was actually, it would work better for a tiny house than it would for one of those larger mobile homes. And we also were excited about it. And that was important. Like we kind of went on that feeling of this feels like something that can, that we can express ourselves through the entirety of the build we pretty much worked with the project manager who was fantastic was you know involving us every step of the way we would get picture updates we would get like texts and emails it was a constant communication it was never a situation where we had to be like hey what's going on uh, greg the owner of rocky mountain tiny homes he's willing to work with clients on their budget 
And I, we approached Greg with an idea that we wanted to just spend 60000 And I think we requested something, <laughs> something like ridiculous. a 28 or 30 foot <laughs> tiny home. And he's like, mm, maybe we can manage that a little bit. We settled on a 24 foot length and we increased our budget to 80000 But by the end, it just came out to 75000 They offered us options that would help us stay in budget. Anytime we wanted something specific that might cost a bit more, uh, they just said, okay, well, we can do that and then maybe save a little bit in this area. So mm -hmm. we were so satisfied with the final product because they were so helpful by helping us feel like we were getting our money's worth. Mm -hmm. And towards the back of the house is our bathroom. When you come into the bathroom, you'll notice that we have a washer-dryer combo. This was a choice so we could save space, and we've been relatively pleased with it. It has its limitations, but it, it's been a good solution for, for what we needed. And you also notice that the uh, countertop is again the same butcher block as the stairs and our kitchen countertop. It's also a, a higher counter height. And this was a solution that our builder worked with us on. We wanted to save space by having the washer dryer underneath the bathroom sink. And that just required us to have a higher than normal countertop. It maybe took some adjusting, but I think we're both used to it now and we don't really notice the difference. Here's our bathroom sink. We really liked the way vessel sinks look. We liked the pop of color. It saves some space in that you don't have to build anything underneath the countertop, it just sits on top. The toilet is just a conventional toilet. We considered a composting toilet, and that was our original plan, but just knowing that at our uh, parking spot we'd have a sewer hookup, this just made the most sense. We have a nice window here, we have a bathroom vent. It's really important in tiny houses to have uh, ventilation, because with everything kind of compressed in a small space, it can get very humid. Um, so when you're showering in here and cooking not, not too far away, you do just need ways to, to vent out that humidity. This is our drinking water. We just refill these bottles at the grocery store. And I just kind of built this little shelf from some leftover wood that we had uh, so it can sit up here. Thinking about space, this was just kind of the, the best place for it. It's out of the way and it's close enough to the kitchen that it's always convenient to get to. The shower is a full-size bathtub shower combo. Um, some, a lot of people, when they think about going into a tiny house, they think that your bathroom has to be really small and that you're not gonna have room for a bathtub. It's one of those things where the space actually fits more than you expect it to. And so our bathroom is actually not too much smaller than your typical bathroom in a house or an apartment. It's just that we also kind of have our washer dryer in here. It might feel like the space is more maximized. Let's walk upstairs and take a look at the sleeping loft. Well, this is our sleeping loft. We really like the way it turned out. We considered trying to put in a skylight here so we could look up at the stars. Our builder kind of cautioned us against that because they tend to leak really badly. And actually the, the number of windows we have up here uh, I think feels great. It's uh, plenty of space for a queen-size mattress. A as we kind of go around this way, um, we have a shelf, kind of like a bedside shelf. This one's kind of dedicated to Lost Monster, uh, our cat who passed away this past summer. Uh, we have this nice big window here. This is actually uh, the only custom-sized window in the house. Uh, for safety reasons, we have to have kind of an egress in case of an emergency, so we can actually escape through that window if needed. These uh, cubbies here are where we keep most of our sort of daily clothes that, you know, we, we just put on up here. One of the first things that was on our mind was uh, the catwalk. When you have pets in a tiny house, it's, it, it is important to consider what space they're going to use. And this, I think, has been great for our cats. We started looking in the Albuquerque area, we kind of stumbled across some land for sale in Moriarty. The land in Moriarty was, was really nice, price was reasonable, so we went ahead and bought it and then 
the house was already being built when we bought the land. So at that point, we were trying to figure out zoning and things like that and ran into some challenges, realized like, oh, this is not going to be a simple process because the, the way this county had things set up, a tiny house, it's not quite an RV, it's not quite a home. So you have to kind of like pick a direction to decide to register it. And if we had picked the RV direction, we couldn't make that our permanent residence. This county, they really wanted it to be a licensed New Mexico builder, even if the standards were the same. Our land still needs a well. Uh, we have to bring electricity onto it and put in a septic tank. So just those little things will take time, but it's definitely something we plan to do and to get around the New Mexico license builder problem, we're planning to put a very small structure on it and make that kind of our guest house and then move the tiny house right onto the land. Yeah, at that point, we would just register the tiny as an RV. There's no, no law keeping us from living in it. We wouldn't live in it permanently. Well, technically, no. Technically. According to the law, we wouldn't be living no. in it permanently. No. Well, we moved in to River Edge uh, in July of 2022. And yeah, it, it has been neat to meet other folks in tiny houses, and it does seem like everybody has their own story. Yeah, and I think that was a comforting factor when we realized we weren't going to be able to live on our land immediately. The fact that we would be in a community was encouraging, given that this was something we were doing for the first time knowing that we would be able to talk to others about how they were doing it and what works for them. Mm -hmm. And having that support around you uh, can make it easier, at least kind of going into it. If you feel uncertain about what's tiny living going to be like, <laughs> just knowing that other people are doing it and they're just fine yeah, is helpful. Mm -hmm. watching our video and for stopping by Tiny House Expedition. I'm Alexis. And I'm Christian. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more tiny home tours and stories, click the videos below. And join us on Instagram for bonus content. Including face-to-face -face conversations with us. <laughs> <laughs> we hope to see you there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.